Hello friends, today we'll be discussing on EPC and CMT jobs, wherein we will go through the different jobs and its details. So my name is Suresh Vunjari and welcome back to my channel. If you are keen to learn on the varsity stuff, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell notification for new videos. So let's get started. So in CMT jobs, we have uh, admin console section and custom setting. So mainly we'll be discussing on uh, this maintenance jobs today. So in the maintenance job, mainly we'll be will be using this product hierarchy maintenance, clear manage platform cache and refresh platform cache. So before, before discussing uh, this, so it is really important to understand why we need to run this CMT jobs, what job needs to be executed at what situation and what precaution need to be taken care while executing this CMT jobs. First thing first, why we need to execute this job? The industry CPQ underneath, it uses the platform cache concept, wherein it will store the, the product and its related data into a, a platform cache, so that it will help in order to uh, the optimizing the performance, right? So what happens is whenever we are trying to read the products and its related data, every time it needs to go through the objects and its related uh, the, the objects, so instead of that, it can uh, data can be get it from the platform or or cache it, and it will enhance the performance. So uh, for this, uh, industry CPQ has its uh, dedicated platform cache, Salesforce platform cache called CPQ partition, which is created as part of post installation step, right? And this this uh, this can be created after the managed package installation. Yeah. And uh, Salesforce platform cache has I think around a 10 Mbps subspace out of which some space can be dedicatedly assigned to CPQ partition platform cache. So we have a product hierarchy maintenance job. We have a clear managed platform cache and refresh platform cache. So the product hierarchy maintenance jobs. So this job has to be run. So whenever there is a change in the product uh, or product bundle, or let's say you have created a new product, right? And you have configured few pricing that. So it is necessary to execute the product hierarchy maintenance job, right? And it is again important. Uh, so whenever there is a package upgrade happened on the org, so this job is necessarily to be executed. And let's say you have uh, migrated a product from other instance to uh, the target instance. And if you have created a org newly, it is necessary to execute product hierarchy maintenance. So it is, again, it is always important to maintain um, which job has to execute first, right? So in this situation, so either you can clear you can execute clear managed platform cache and then you can execute a product hierarchy maintenance job. But the, the refresh platform cache job has to be executed at the end. So, uh, so before running the re refresh platform cache, this has to be executed. So what this clear managed platform cache job does, this job clears the partition, which is, uh, which is data created at the, the org level or cache level, it will clear up that data. Delete all the product hierarchy and context rules data in the org cache, how to execute after the product hierarchy maintenance job. And this has to be executed before refresh platform cache. What is refresh platform cache? So this refresh platform cache job, it copies the product hierarchy data to the platform cache and it rebuilds the product attribute cache. It runs after the product. It has to be run after the product hierarchy maintenance job and the job. So uh, this job has an impact or uh, what, what to say like, uh, if, if you are on a production or, or some user is creating a, a order and if you are running that job, so it may hamper their data. So they may not get the expected result during the during the job execution. So it is, it is very much necessary. Execution of this refresh platform cache has to be discussed with stakeholder 
and it is better to be executed during the downtime window. So uh, there are certain jobs uh, out of these three jobs. Uh, it is not always necessary to execute all three, right? So at some scenarios, we can execute uh, only few, right? So let's understand when we need to execute what job, right? So for a product hierarchy maintenance job, right? So, so this job has to be executed. Let's say whenever you create a new product, whenever you created a pa uh, package update is done, a new org has been created or change in the product or product bundle, change in the attribute or change in the product card cardinality. So this has the product hierarchy maintenance job has to be executed in these scenarios. And post this job execution, we need to execute a clear platform cache and then it follows refresh platform cache. Whereas if you have only changes to the rule, uh, it may be a advanced rule or context rules, or you, if you are changing uh, anything on the, the product pricing or changing on the pricing step, there is no need to execute a refresh plat uh, product hierarchy maintenance job. You have to execute clear managed platform cache and followed by refresh platform cache. Yeah, so that it will the changes will get reflected correctly. So here again, I have mentioned like what is the job impact, right? So clear managed platform cache, what it does is you remove all the cache data from the platform cache. And uh, if, if during that time, if someone is using the services, so they may not be able to get expected data. Apart from executing product hierarchy maintenance job, clear managed platform cache job, and refresh platform, platform cache job, sometimes we need to execute uh, the certain jobs, mainly like EPC product attribute JSON job and fixed attribute JSON job, right? So let's understand when we need to execute. Let's uh, consider a scenario where you are you are migrating the product from one out to other, right? So what happens in this situation is, so uh, the product which are migrated will hold the attribute IDs from the source of, right? And when you when you use uh, the same attribute IDs, the record IDs from the previous or source of, it may not give the proper expected results. So whenever you migrate these products from a source org to target org, it is very much necessary in order to uh, execute these jobs, EPC product attribute jobs, where what you can do is you can pass either the product code or product IDs, and we need to execute this. So once after this execution, we need to uh, execute the fixed attribute job. So what it does is it will sync these two, uh, jobs will sync the products and its related attributes, right? And post that we need to execute our uh, maintenance jobs, mainly the hierarchy, uh, clear managed platform and refresh platform cache. Uh, and apart from that, like whenever you are, uh, you, you might be migrating the, the promotions which are related to the products and uh, if we have some override uh, attributes on the product, so we need to make sure we are running EPC fix compile attribute override batch job as well. Yeah. So these details can be, we can get it on the success community. So uh, let's get into the Salesforce application now and we will go through uh, what is the navigation for the CMT jobs and uh, we will we'll walk through that. Right, I'm into a connected to Salesforce and I'm into a CMT, right? So we can directly search in our launcher as a CMT. We'll land up here. And in that, so we need to go to the maintenance jobs. So in these maintenance, there are a uh, lot many jobs, but uh, we are mainly discussing on these three jobs, right? So uh, in, in Salesforce documentation, uh, they they mainly gives right they they mainly give so we need to execute the clear managed platform cache so this job does a clearing all the or cache right and then once this is done we need to execute this product hierarchy maintenance jobs once after this 
we need to execute the refresh platform cache. So this is the actual, the caching data will get built. So let's go ahead and start it. So this notification will be shown up. And if you want to delete the old data, so uh, you can check this and start the job. Here, uh, the processing of Apex jobs will be shown up here. This job is completed. And let's start this one. The execution of these jobs can be again monitored from the setup as well by going to Apex jobs. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, yeah, so this, uh, whenever you check this delete old data, so the once the org cache I and mean, new data has been created, it will delete the old data. Okay. Uh, I was referring that platform cache, right? So here we have CPQ partition. It is uh, dedicatedly uh, allowed 4 Mbps, 4 MB of data. Apart from this, so we, we will come across another set of uh, jobs, which is a cacheable API jobs. If your org or the project is using DC API, we need to make sure we are running this populate API metadata, populate API cache, then generate cached API records. Yeah? So here uh, we, we, we need to uh, follow this hierarchy process. Let's say uh, th this is for you know, newly created products. And whenever you are, let's say you are updated a product and you want to load again, right? So in that occasion, you, you can directly come here and regenerate cached API records instead of uh, re-executing load API, populate API cache, you can directly execute regenerate cached API records. So uh, this is for it for now. So in another video, we will go through that, how we can execute all these jobs from the backend. When I say backend, through the Apex script. Thank you for watching.